Bibles, please, and turn to Romans chapter number 10. Romans chapter number 10. And if you uh, don't have a Bible with you this morning, I'd encourage you just to uh, listen and intently. I'll read each verse and uh, give you what the Word of God has to say. And uh, our message, the message this morning is going to be brief for sake of time. But I want to say this. Uh, when, we do a, when we have a day like Super Summer Sunday... Uh, we always look forward to a good time. We look forward to fun and a picnic and, and uh, all the events afterwards. And I'll tell you this, you won't miss any of the events afterwards. I'm going to let you out on time. You say, what's on time? I'm going to let you out on time. And uh, uh, I'm going to let you out in time to get the food, to get to the, the games, the things over there. Uh, but the most important thing of this whole day is the preaching of the Word of God. And it's not the most important because I'm preaching. But it's most important because of the book I'm preaching. The Bible is the Word of God. And uh, Jesus said this. Jesus had this to say about His Word. He said that whoever hears these sayings of His and does them, He said, I'll tell you unto whom He is likened. And I'm loosely quoting it here. He said, He is like unto a wise man. He said, if you hear these sayings, and you'll do them, and you'll live your life by them. He said, he's like a wise man that built his house upon a rock. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and they beat upon that house, but the house didn't fall. Why? Because it was founded upon a rock. You know what those winds, those waves, those rains represent? They represent the storms of life. You know how many of us are going to go through storms in life? Every one of us. And as a matter of fact, if you're not going through a storm right now, maybe your life is calm. Maybe things at some point are easier than they've been. Hold on, don't worry. More storms will come. That's part of life. The Bible says man is born into trouble as the sparks fly upward. As a matter of fact, I believe truly life is such that at the same time you have some rough things in life, you always have good things going on too. It's just a matter of which one you focus on. But the Bible also says, whoever hears these sayings of Jesus Christ and doesn't do them, Jesus said, I'll tell you unto whom he is like, and he said, he is like to a man that built his house upon the sand. Now, I grew up in Michigan, and I lived in Tennessee four years, but I spent most of my time in the, in the farm country of western Michigan, and uh, I've seen houses every year, every year in Michigan, there are some beautiful houses that they build right on the edge of Lake Michigan. Those posts, they're on these bluffs off of Lake Michigan, and the posts are down in the sand of Lake Michigan. And every year growing up there, I'd remember at least one house sliding down that hill, and they'd lose the house. Why? Because it wasn't founded, it wasn't secured properly. And Jesus said, if you'll hear these sayings of His, but you don't do them, he said, I'll tell you who that person is like to, like unto. They're like to a person who built their house upon the sand, and the rains descended, the same rains, the same troubles. The, waves, the winds blew, the same winds, the same trouble. And what happens to that house? It falls. Why? Because it's not founded upon a rock. I want to challenge you this morning. I want to encourage you. If you don't, number one, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I mean, you are not 100% sure. That when you die, you're going to heaven. I want to encourage you today to get your life founded upon the rock, upon Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you today to say yes to Jesus Christ, to humble your heart and come to Him for salvation. But number two, if you are saved, you do know Jesus Christ is your Savior. You know that you're forgiven. I want to encourage you to begin building your life, founding your life upon the Word of God. I mean, start reading the Word of God. Start listening to it. Start letting God change your life through His Word. This morning, I'm going to talk about a very simple subject because, again, I believe there are people here this morning that you don't know Christ as your Savior. And if there's one message I would give to you, if there's one message I could tell you, it's what I'm going to tell you this morning. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, look at verse number 9, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus... And shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference 
between the Jew and the Greek. What is that saying? Basically, he was writing to some folks who believed that their, their ancestry, their heritage was such that God was impressed. And here's what the writer was saying. He was saying, listen, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what color you are. Red, yellow, black, and white. We, we sing a song with the kids. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in His sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. And guess what? Jesus loves the old children of the world too. He loves all the children of the world. He loves us. He loved us so much He died for us. Then we sing another song. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, pink and green, strangest colors I've ever seen. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Now you're never going to forget that song just like that. Say, what's the point of that verse? The point is it doesn't matter who you are. The point is it doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter how much money you have or don't have, what your education is or isn't, what your background is, who your parents are. It doesn't matter. What matters is that whoever you are, Jesus died for you. Whoever you are, Jesus loved you so much that He paid the price for your sins. Verse 12, there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Lord, I pray that You'll fill me with Your Spirit as I preach Your Word. Lord, if there's one person here today that is not 100% sure that they're saved, Lord, no matter what age they are, may they humble their hearts today and come to you for salvation. Lord Jesus, speak to our hearts, I pray. Lord, for those of us who are saved, help us to be burdened to get this truth to a lost, dying world. In Jesus' name, amen. What does that verse say, Romans 10, 13? Whosoever, anybody. It doesn't matter your background, your color, your health. It doesn't matter. He said, if you will call, he'll save your soul. I want you to listen to six simple statements this morning. In fact, I'm going to ask you this morning to repeat these statements after me. These statements are absolutely true. And I'm going to talk this morning about how you can be saved. Now, when you say the word saved, a lot of people think of a lot of different things. Some people, when they think of saved, I spoke to one person recently. I said, do you know you're saved? Well, yeah, I've been saved because I was in a car wreck, but I survived. And God let me live through it. That's not what the Scripture is talking about when it's talking about being saved. See, you are a body. We all have a body. But one day, if Jesus tarries His coming, this body is going to die. But you're more than a body. When you look into somebody's eyes, that's where you see the real person. When you look into somebody's eyes, you see a soul. And that soul is going to live forever in heaven or hell. That's, what, that's, that's the real person. That soul that lives in heaven or hell. And Jesus said, if you'll call upon the Lord, He'll save your soul. I want you to know these six very quick statements. Number one, I want you to say this with me. God made me. Would you say that with me? God made me. I'm telling you how to be saved, how your soul can go to heaven someday. God made you. Genesis 1.1 says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. You see, if you'll accept that first phrase in the book of Genesis, you can accept the rest of the Bible. The, the, the world, a lot, of the, a lot of the schools and other places don't teach in the beginning God. What they teach is in the beginning some swirling mass that exploded and here we are. They teach in the, in the beginning some little amoeba that crawled out of the ocean. Uh, he was an amoeba to begin to begin. Then he was a frog with his tail tucked in, then he was a monkey swinging from a tree, now he's a doctor with a Ph.D. No, we're, that's not, we, we didn't come from evolution, we came from Jesus Christ. God created you. I mean, God made you. So would you say that with me again, number one, God made me. Go ahead and say it, God made me. God made you. And because He made you, He has a purpose for you. I mean, He designed your life. God's Word says He knows how many hairs are on your head. He knows, He knew your name before you were even born, which, by the way, is why abortion is so wrong. Abortion is such sinful, wicked behavior. Why? Because it's murdering a person that God created. Uh, well, we're, by the way, we're, going, we're seeing all over the news now how these, these so-called clinics that are planning parenthood, you don't plan parenthood. God plans parenthood. God gives life. You don't give life, and you don't have the right to take life. They're murdering children. That's abortion. It's wickedness in the eyes of God. Why? Because, number one, God made you. He loves you. He had a purpose for you. I got ahead of myself. Number one, say, God made me. Say it again. God made me. Number two, God loves me. Go ahead and say that. 
God loves me. You know, we know that with our minds. We give mental assent to this fact that, yes, there's a God in heaven who loves us, but do you really understand how much God loves you? I, I mean, sometimes when we go through difficult times in life, Josh, I'm going to go to this microphone. Sometimes when we go through difficult times in life, we doubt whether God really loves us. I mean, maybe it's a struggle in your marriage or a struggle at home or a struggle with your finances or your own health is failing. And so sometimes you can question and you can doubt and you can say, God, if you really love me, how come I go through this trouble? There's a song that says, Does Jesus care when my heart is pained too deeply, uh, too, too deeply for mirth and song? Does Jesus care? The chorus says, Oh, yes, He cares. I know He cares. His heart is touched by my grief. What does Isaiah 53 say? It says that Jesus was a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from Him, yet He was the one who carried our sorrows, our burdens, our sins. He took it for us. God loves you. When God first made Adam and Eve and He created them and He put them into a paradise, a perfect garden, God created them and He loved them and His goal was to spend eternity with them in that perfect paradise but I want you to know, number three, just as real as the fact that God loves you, number three, I want you to say this because it's absolutely just as true, and that is this, the devil hates me. Go ahead and say that. The devil hates me. Uh, hey, you know one of the greatest tactics the devil uses? He just doesn't want you to believe in his existence. You know, if you don't believe you have an enemy, then you won't prepare to face him. If you don't believe you have an enemy, you won't be scared of him. You won't be upset at the, your enemy. But you do have a real enemy. Just as real as God, there's a devil who, by the way, one day will be cast forever into the lake of fire. But there's a devil, the Bible says, he is the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. The Bible says he's the lowercase God of this world. You look around where people are calling right wrong and wrong right, and the devil is the one behind that. I mean, he's just as real as the Lord is. But now listen, he's not just as powerful. And he's not just as omni he's not omniscient. And he's not all-knowing. He's not all-powerful. But he is real and he is your adversary and he hates you. And he hates God. Now the day came, the devil said, you know what, I, can't, I hate God and I can't take God off his throne, but here's what I'll do. I'll get to God's children. And so what did the devil do? He came to Adam and he came to Eve first and he said, Eve, he said, has God said you can't eat of every tree of the garden? Hey Eve, why don't you rebel against God? Hey Eve, why don't you uh, go ahead and eat of the fruit, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? And Eve said, well, it looks good for food to me. It looks like it'll make me wise. And so she ate and Adam ate and he rebelled against God, knew what he was doing. And God's Word says all men have sinned. The Bible says as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. So death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. You know, you don't have to teach a little kid how to lie, cheat, and steal. You don't have to have a class. You don't, you don't teach class, kindergarten, to a ch child how to lie, cheat, and steal. Why not? Because they're just like their... No, I won't say their mother. I was going to say, they're, they're just like, and if you're a lady here, just like their father. No, no, you know what they're just like? They're just like their parents. Let me say that again. They're just like their parents. They have a sin nature. Uh, if you're here this morning and you're breathing, guess what? You have a sin nature. Some people say, I, I'll go to heaven because I keep the Ten Commandments. Have you really? Sometimes people say, I say, well, Tell me, what are the Ten Commandments? Well, I, well um, I know I know, shouldn't do bad stuff. Yeah, that, that's one of them, you know, kind of. But you know, the fact is we've all broken the Ten Commandments. If you're sitting here this morning, raise your hand. If you're, if you're in here this morning, if you're awake, go ahead. Yeah. Every person with their hand up, we've broken the Ten Commandments. Every person. The Bible says if you keep the whole law of God, but you offend in one point, you're guilty of all. God's, God's law is like a chain. You break one link, you break the whole thing. Let's just talk about some of those commandments. What did Jesus say? He said, Thou shalt not bear false witness. What is that? That's lying. You ever told a lie? See, yeah, but it was a little white lie. Isn't that funny how all our lies are little white lies and everybody else's are bad lies? Well, I'm, you know, I'm not bad like so and so. Mine are little white lies. Still lies. We've broken God's commandments. 
What about the command to honor your father and mother? Have you always honored your parents? Hey, hey even, even as you're grown, that doesn't mean you can't you have to you should dishonor your parents. You should honor them more now that you're grown. Honor your father and mother, the Bible says. How about having no other gods? Have you ever put anything in front of God more important in your life? That's one of the commandments. How about covetousness? Have you ever looked at somebody with envy and wanted something they had? I mean, you've, you've looked at it and said, Boy, I want... God's Word says, Thou shalt not covet. What about thou shalt not steal? Have you ever taken something that didn't belong to you? Time or stuff or money? So yeah, but it wasn't anything real big. Oh, so your sins are little. No, all our sins, the Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You see, because of our sin, we face the same penalty Satan faced. Satan hates God and Satan hates you. And so Satan wanted you to fall. He wanted me to fall just like he fell. The Bible says God made us. He loves us. Satan hates us. And our sin, number four, say this with me, sin, number one, God made me. Say that again, would you? God made me. Number two, God loves me. Say that with me. Number three, the devil hates me. Number four, sin destroys me. Sin destroys me. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. Just like we go to work and we earn a paycheck, God said there's a paycheck coming for sin, and that paycheck is death. Now, physically, yes, we're going to die, but your soul, that eternal death, that second death, the Bible says, separation from God forever in a place Jesus called hell. Listen, it's a real place. It wasn't created for us. It was created for the, for the devil and his angels. But when we decide to sin and break God's laws, we've sinned and we deserve that second death. Those Ten Commandments, what about murders? Well, I haven't ever killed anybody. Jesus said this. He said, if you hate somebody in your heart, that's as bad as murder. So, whoa, 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 wait a minute, Pastor. I haven't killed anybody. How, how, come, how can Jesus say I'm like a murderer? Because, listen, God, we say this a lot, right? God doesn't just see the outside. What does He see? What does He see? He sees that. He sees the heart. And you know the motivation behind murder? It's, it's that same hatred. It's that same hatred. Sin destroys us. By the way, when we give in to sin, that destroys our lives. The wages of sin is still death. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. I'm giving you all a bunch of bad news right now. Don't worry, I'm about to give you the good news. God made you. God loves you. The devil hates you. Sin will destroy you. Number five, Jesus died for you. And say it this way, Jesus died for me. Say it, Jesus died for me. Jesus died for you. He died for me. Why did Jesus have to come? Because we needed a Savior. Why did Jesus have to be born as a little baby or we celebrate at Christmas time? And why did He have to live a perfect sinless life for 33 and a half years? And why did He allow people like us to take Him and to spit on Him and to beat Him and to whip Him and to nail uh, uh, His hands and His feet to an old rugged splintery cross? And why did He hang naked and shamed on that cross? And why did He allow people to take a crown of thorns and beat those thorns down into His brow? And why did He allow them to take His beard and pull it out of his face. And why did he allow people to mock him? They used to walk by. As he was on that cross, they walked by and they wagged their heads with disdain and they said, look at him. He saved others himself he cannot save. And what they didn't realize is if he had saved himself, he couldn't save us. Why? Because we needed somebody to pay the price for our sins. I owed a debt I couldn't pay. Jesus paid a debt he didn't owe. He suffered and bled and died on that cross. He died for us. He took our place. He literally raised His hand when we were facing death and eternal damnation and hell, and He said, Father, I'll go take their place. Father, take me instead of them. That's what exactly what Jesus did for you. That's exactly what He did for you. He died in our place. He shed His blood. He hung on that cross to pay for our sins. Now listen... I couldn't pay for anyone's sins. Why? I'm a sinner who needs a Savior. And no one here could pay for my sins. Why? Because we're all sinners who need a Savior. But Jesus Christ was the only one qualified to be our Savior. Why? Because He didn't owe us in debt. And he came to this earth and He suffered and bled and died. Last of all, number six, last of all, 
Would you say this with me? Jesus saves me. Would you say that? Jesus saves me. What does Romans 10.13 say? It says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Who is that? That's Jesus Christ. Shall be saved. If you're willing to humble your heart today, you say, Pastor, it seems too simple to get to heaven that way. I'm going to tell you why it's simple for us. Because eternal life is a free gift that Jesus paid the price for. Jesus did the hard part when He died on the cross and rose again. All you have to do is humble your heart and trust Him as your Savior, and He will save you. Amen. I'll be done with this. I, I've told this story before. Growing up in Michigan, we'd go out and swim in Lake Michigan. Right there close to... I grew up a little bit outside of Grand Rapids, and we'd go to Lake Michigan, and we'd swim. And uh, well, I didn't know how to swim. I'd just go out in the water and play in the waves. And my sister, Becky, she still lives up in Michigan. She's seven years older than me. One time she took me on her back and took me out into the water. Now, maybe she was trying to get rid of me, but I don't think so. She set me down on a sandbar. How many of you know what a sandbar is? She set me down on this sandbar. Now what that means is this. It's a little rise under the water on the surface, uh, on the bottom rather. It's a little rise, like a little hill under the water. So what can happen if you're on top of a sandbar is you can actually walk back toward shore and it can be deeper. And that's exactly what happened. I was a little kid, didn't know how to swim. I had had lessons at the YMCA, and here's all I knew. I was, I forgot what they called you. Like you, The bottom was like you were the whales, and the next one were dolphins. I, I was whatever the bottom one was. That's what I was. And I knew enough to go and push off the bottom and come up for air. And that, that's what they taught us. They'd teach you at the side of the pool to push up off the bottom, come up, get a breath, go back down. Push up, get a breath, go back down. My sister set me down on that sandbar, and I got bored out there. So I wanted to go back to shore. And as I began walking back toward shore, you can guess what happened. I sunk underneath the water. I went underneath the water, my feet hit the bottom, and I pushed up, and I immediately did what I'd been trained to do. That's all I knew how to do. And I came up, and I breathed, and I yelled, Help! Is everybody awake now? <laughs> Help! And the waves, the, the, the noise. I could see my family up on the shore, but they could not hear me. I remember how desperate I felt. Went back under the water again. Felt the bottom, pushed up. Got a breath. Help! Under the water again. I don't know how long that was, but it was long enough. It's probably at least 10 or 15 seconds, which when you don't know how to swim and you're drowning, possibly drowning, is a long time. But all of a sudden, I felt an arm, a hand grab my arm and pull me up out of that water. And it was my sister. She did love me after all. And she grabbed me and she carried me up to shore. She saved my life physically. But listen, that's not much different than what it means to be saved spiritually. Here we are, we're sinners, we're lost, we're on our way to hell. We have no way to save ourselves. I, my sister didn't come out there and go, hey, swim to shore yourself, go ahead. I couldn't do it. But you know, you can't save yourself. You can't get to heaven on your good works. Only Jesus can save you. And if you're here this morning and you're willing to humble your heart, and you're just willing to say, Lord, help. <laughs> Lord, save my soul. He'll save you today. He'll forgive you today. He'll make you His child today. Let's bow Hi everybody, ahead. this is Tim DeVries, pastor of Vision Valley Baptist Church in Mount Washington, Kentucky, and I want to thank you for watching our YouTube channel today. Our desire is that the world know Jesus Christ as Savior, and that in this generation, His people will be faithful, uh, courageous, bold witnesses for Him. I want to say to you, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, God loves you and wants you to know for sure that you have a home in heaven. In order to know for sure you're saved and that you're going to heaven, the Bible tells us we need to know, first of all, that we're all sinners. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because of our sin, we don't measure up to God's glory. God is perfect, we are not. And sin keeps us out of heaven. Secondly, the Bible says, For the wages of sin is death. The Scripture says, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Revelation 20.14 and 15 says, And death and hell... We're cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. You're going to spend eternity somewhere. And because of our sin, we don't deserve heaven. Unfortunately, we deserve a devil's hell. But the good news is this, that God loves us. 
And because He loves us, He made one way of salvation. It's not through a church. It's not through a religion. It's not through doing the best works you can do. The only way He made to get to heaven is through His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus said this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by Me. And in Acts 4.12, the Scripture says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus came to this earth. He was born. He lived a perfect, sinless life. The Bible says in Romans 5.8, But God commendeth His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus took our place on the old rugged cross. He was crucified, buried, and rose again to pay for our sins. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus today offers you a free gift. That gift is eternal life, heaven instead of hell. And if today you're willing to trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you're willing to call on Him today to save you, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Would you call on the Lord Jesus Christ right now to be your Savior? If you will, He promised He would save you. Feel free to contact us with any questions. We want to help you grow in your walk with Jesus Christ. God bless you.